Yo, out of four, and then so, eh, your mama kwaba, about two forty viso. Sambria minimum kasai de, eh, yasabe pi, oh, Rafa orphanage home. Rafa orphanage home, and our two forty viso. Sambri, yasabe pi, um, eh, ye papa apostle. Kobna EJ and I say dear B P M Owaha. So as someone some Kakrebia or Pesel or Kacha Mansini uh Mind Gana and Ian Penny for no enina and unti a bra ye be PM Wahano ye be Pese ye be coin side ho na fi senior jumedian secono ya koko he senior esikoni in sama hudwa or ama or mind gana any yem penny for nina. Um ladies and gentlemen, um I welcome all of you back to the Jehovah Rapha orphanage. Uh, today is June 4th. 20 days ago, we were here on the 15th of May, as most of you will recollect. And today, June 4th, the Lord laid it on my heart again to come to this orphanage and present our request before God. If you read Psalm 8, verse 2, it says, through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Through the praises, through the mouth of children, of babes, the Bible says God has what? Ordained strength in the mouth of babies because of the enemy, because of the avenger, to silence them. So today, June 4th, we have come to silence the enemy. We have come to silence the avenger. Amen. The avenger wants what happened 41 years ago to kind of repeat itself to their own benefit. But God says never. Amen. And when God says never, it means never. Amen. 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 One of the reasons we also come here is that Psalm 68 verse 4 to 5 it says sing to god sing in praise of his name extol him who rides on the clouds rejoice before him his name is the lord a father to the fatherless a defender of widows is god in his holy dwelling he is a father to the fatherless so these are orphans they don't have a father and almighty god is their father so when we come and God says, I have ordained strength in the mouth of these innocent young ones so that the enemy, the avenger, the foe will be silenced. So that is why we are here today. Praise the Lord. June 4th. What was the June 4th revolution all about? The man who led it said it was a house cleaning exercise. To clean corruption and all the things we call the kalabuli at that time some of you are too young to remember <laughs> but thank god i was 16 years old so i saw a lot of things and it's not palatable at all and we don't want it to repeat but there are certain people who are pushing it president rollins always says don't blame the one who struck the matches blame those who opened the gas because people are opening the gas and we are all playing with matches we're all playing with the lighter so boom before you know there's fire and you blame those who struck the match forgetting that people deliberately opened the gas so this is what we want to avoid those who are opening the gas they are citing something and i pray that it doesn't happen or they will ever forget never forget so may 15th to june 4th is 20 days may 15th a head of state called akufu 41 years ago arrested john put john in prison put john on trial and john was going to be executed but this is may 15th but 20 days later june 4th john was liberated and akufu who put john in prison was in prison himself and he ended up being what executed today the tables will turn 
I say, wherever they have hidden John, today John comes out. I say, wherever they have hidden John, today, June 4th, John is coming out. I said, he's coming out. I said, he's coming out. I said, he's coming out. I I see him walking out. Just like Lazarus walked out from the grave. John is coming out. They have hidden him somewhere, and they think they have finished with John. But I pronounce today, as a servant of the Most High God, that John is coming out. 41 years ago, John came out. Today, in memory of June 4th, John is coming out. Hallelujah. Then, 12 days later, 16 June, first execution. A former sitting head uh, head of state called Kutua Champong was executed. 10 days later, on the 26th, Akufu and Afrifa, all, Akufu was the uh, current head of state, Afrifa was uh, a former. He led in the overthrow of Nkrumah with Kutuka. They were also what? Executed. So June 4th is not something to joke about. Look, isn't it ironic? Isn't it a mystery that NDC should take a petition? to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court didn't find any other day to listen to the petition but on June 4th. And when I was coming, I just read the Supreme Court's decision. They said the EC should provide the legal instrument why the voters' ID card should not be included. If I have a voters' ID card and you are doing a new register, who gave me the voters' ID card? My mother? Is it not the same EC? So how come today you say you don't accept it? Because we know that already the uh, register has been cleansed of all who um, wrote their name for the National Health Insurance because they had the record. And I think about 56,000 names were cleared. So why are they insisting that this register is not credible? This same register brought President Akufuado. He said he won by one million votes. So what is your problem today? What is your problem? If I were Kufa, I'll be jumping because this register will give me another one million votes. But they know it wasn't the register. They know what they did. So they are afraid. Amen. 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 Now, I want to share briefly my experience of June 16th. June 16th, it's very, very sensitive in the spiritual realms because of what happened in 1979. So in 2012, the Lord told me before or after the Easter holidays, MPP will rise up against President Mills. So we had to go and pray and fast immediately after the Easter holidays. So Easter Monday was 9th. So 10th, 11th, 12th, we went to the Karma Conference Center and prayed and fasted as the Lord directed. Then on Friday, 13th of April, Kennedy, Japan, I declare war. If you are an, Akan, an Ashanti and there's a Voltarian around your house hitting with a, you know, a machete, a woman, funu, whatever. And do you know something? Kenne Japan is born on the 16th of June. He is being used by the MPP. Look, I want to warn Kennedy Japan. You are busy making children orphans by killing their fathers so that you can have power but you want to accumulate wealth and leave houses for your 22 children god says he has heard you go ahead and do it but today he's going to hear the prayers of these orphans and i pray for your children kennedy japan obofo said kennedy japan is happy drinking blood and they sit down and plan to kill people why didn't he respond let me explain the drinking of the blood it's not literally physical. But the party he is defending came to power through the blood of Joseph Bwati Dankwa Edu. So all the ministers who have got appointments, all the ambassadors who have political appointments, I'm not talking about those who are career ambassadors, and the MPs are exempted because half of them, they represent their constituency. But all who have taken appointments from President Akufuado, I want to tell them that they are drinking, they and their family, they are drinking the blood of J.B. Dankwa. And God will demand the blood of J.B. Dankwa from them. If they are smart, they will separate themselves from the camp of Akufuado. I'm telling you, they can write these words down. They 
can write these words down. They are all enjoying the blood of J.B. Dankwa. Any contract you get, you take some home. Your wife uses it to cook. You build houses for your children. They should live and others should be made orphans. God says he has heard you. Continue. Continue drinking and enjoying the blood of J.B. Dankwa. Continue planning to kill people because of power. But 2020 is judgment. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Kennedy has been identified. In 2013, while the Supreme Court issues were going on, something strange happened. You remember the market fires? Look, our president, John Mahama, he's so innocent. He went to even bring some Americans, FBI, to come and help. I was just there, the Lord said, now look at the dates, the pattern. May 15th, Agbogbo, she got bent. May 15th was when Rollins was, you know. Then June 4th, Makola got bent. June 4th, we all know what happened. Go and check the dates. Then June 16th, another market got bent. June 26th, another market got bent because June 16th, June 26th are the execution days. Then the last market got bent June 30th. That is the day the judges were executed. May their souls rest in peace. So who deliberately set the market fires on these dates? Aha. Uh -huh. But I wrote His Excellency President Rawlings and told him something. And he took some steps. He's a big man, so I won't discuss him here. I salute you, founder. But you see something? When these things happened, then June, uh, then 2014, we were going for the World Cup, correct? June 16th, President Akufuado, after telling the whole world that he is coming for a third time because he has chosen two professionals, uh, two professions, pardon me, politics and law, and there's no retirement age, so he's coming back. He made that announcement 20th of March, 2014. June 16th, he funded a church service at the Christ the King Church in memory of the dead generals. <laughs> you may think it's innocent, but the implications are severe. So, he and Rebecca were the special guests of honors. And they invited the children of the generals, you know, and they came and cried. In the evening, I was in my room, and the Lord woke me up at dawn and said, Kwabna, have you watched the dates that Ghana is playing at this World Cup? I'm talking about Brazil. I said, Papa, you know me in football. Uh, I don't like football. I only support black stars. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. As I'm watching, I'm here in South Africa, crowd on my meeting ministry because now I'm coming Miami. Yeah, I don't really follow it passionately, you know. But so thank God for technology. I took my phone, pa, 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 and I was amazed. Ghana played America 16th June, and for the first time, America scored us. I said, "Whoa, America! When did they start playing football?" The second match with Germany was June 21st. The next day was June 22nd, which is Papa Jay's birthday. Then the Lord said, tell Honorable Levi Sefri Ankara to do X, Y, Z, or else. He is coming from Brazil with shame. And when he gets to Ghana, trouble after trouble will be waiting for him. I couldn't get him. He had flown to Brazil. So I went to the ministry. Talk to the secretary. I was giving his email. So I forwarded this message to him. I wasn't hearing anything. He has a, an assistant called Jude. I was pushing them. You ever asked him? I was pushing them. They thought I was crazy because the way I was acting. They didn't mind me. Then the last match with Paraguay was 26 June, the last execution. And you know what the Lord told me? He said, as a result of that service that was held on the 16th of June, the atmosphere is not conducive for victory. 
So tell him to do this and do, do this. And I'll give you permission to pray in a certain direction so that the table will what? Will turn. And I told him to do this before they meet with Germany 21st. Nobody minded me. A colleague prophet of mine in Kumasi prophesied that, yes, we will lose the first match with America. But we were supposed to score Germany and score in the last game to move us to the next level. So, Germany, what happened? The last minute, the goal was equalized. Just before the whistle was blown. And then the match with Paraguay, we scored ourselves. That's all. The rest, didn't have Jose Frianca come from Brazil with shame? Money sharing, money being flown. You know the story behind it. But let me pan a share as here. Nenipa, Nede, Eshe Asie. So when he came, I told him trouble after trouble we'll be waiting for him. When he came, did he have peace? He's right. But do you know why they targeted him? 2008, who was one of the directors of election? And what was the result? Campaign coordinator. What was the result? 2012, what was the Vizifian case rule? What happened? 2016, where was every Zephyr Ankara? What happened? Thank you. So they wanted to take Elvis out of the game. So it was planned that way. And you see they are using dates. That's why I tell us, be careful with dates. If I say today is my birthday and I'm celebrating something, then you should know it's a special occasion for me. Today is my first, second year, and wedding anniversary. It's a special occasion for me. Yeah. Eh? Are you with me? So please, let us not play around with dates and times. Praise the Lord. Okay. So Elvis was dealt with then. Then, let me come to June 16th, 2018. You see, I shared with you, or I've shared with you in the past, how the history of our coup d'etat days are repeating themselves. I shared with you that in 2012, 1972, typologically repeated. 72, what happened? Kwame Nkrumah died. Akufuadu's government was overthrown. So, 2012, 40 years later, President Mills, representing Nkrumah, dies. And candidate Akufuadu says he's won, but good. Then, 1906 typologically repeated in 2016. J.B. Dankwa died. The man at the Flagstaff House was kicked out. The next president is Akufuado. And the same thing happened in 2016. So now, 1979 wants to typologically repeat itself. But you see, if 1979 should typologically repeat itself, it will not favor the MPP. So that means they have to work at it. Okay. What happened in 79? After the coup d'etat and the executions, President Kufuado died in July. Then the UP tradition, today known as the MPP, split into two between Achem and Ashanti, Victor Usu and Uforiata. And then the man from the north sailed through. So they know that if they sit down to allow 1979 to typologically repeat itself, they will lose the election. So what did they do in order not for Achem and Ashanti to break? June 16th. You remember somewhere around June 10th or something, uh, John Boyd was in Kumasi, kneeling down before Asantehne. Then Kendapa followed. Then Anadu followed. Then June 16th, Ochehe moved all the way to Kumasi. They played golf, they had dinner to show the whole world that Asante and Achehme are one. But you see, because of his evil intentions, huh? do you know what happened? On their way back from Kumasi, do you know they had an accident and they nearly died? Do you know who said the situation? It is Akwetia, Nana Akwetia, the chief of Akwetia. He saved them that day. As the Lord my God lives, I will never lie. Today, Ochihi would have been obituary or perhaps crippled. Because it was Akwetia who was leading the convoy. And when the articulator was coming, it faced Akwetia. And he cried, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the car did an about ten and faced Kumasi. Then the articulator mysteriously passed somewhere. Then come and see Ochehi's convoy. Shim, 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 shim. So what would have happened if Akwetia's car had been smashed? 
That means all the others, boom. Because of their evil intention. So they invited Otunfo to also come to Chebi. And that would have been history. It was history because this is the first time. I tried to stop Otunfo from going. I wrote a letter because I couldn't get anybody to, you know, tell him privately. You know, getting Otunfo is not <laughs> a joking matter. So I know one of his lieutenants, he's my uncle, one of Otunfo's lieutenants, you know. So I called him because Otunfo was moving that weekend. I said, Uncle, this is what the Lord showed me. This is, so please tell Otunfo not to go. And he said, Nana has opened his mouth in public and saying he's going. So he cannot change it. Nobody can say anything. You see, it, it is like when Herodias, uh, the daughter, uh, danced. And then Herod asked, name what you want in front of people. He said, give me John the Baptist's head. Because he said it in public, he didn't want to do it. But he'll be put to shame. So even if Otunfo didn't want to go, he has opened his mouth publicly. So he must go. So they, he went. At that meeting, Jerry Rollins was there. Otunfo was there. Daiso Korehine was there. Ajima Kunedu was there. John Mama was not there. A meeting was held in closed doors. And the, as part of the strategies, that is what the EC is implementing. To do to NDC what they did to CPP. But you see, now they want to implicate Otunfo and Rollins. Bring them into the picture as if they are with them. As if Otunfo and Rollins endorses what is happening. But it is a lie. So today, Nana, I'm on my feet because you are my Lord. I don't want anything evil to happen to you, Nana. Disassociate yourself with these evil murderers. Nana, they killed J.B. Dankwedu and used his blood to come to power. Now they want to come and hide under your cloth. And you went there and declared, Asante and Achim, we are one. When did we become one? What about Asante and the North? What about Asante and the Fantis? What about Asante and the Dagombas? What about Asante and the Frafres? What about Asante and the Voltes? Are we not one? The whole of Ghana, we are one. Asante and Achim are not special. We should stop this nonsense today. Then they take you there and you go and announce Asante and Achim, today we are one. They have evil intentions. You know what they want to do? They want to smuggle Ofuriata into the presidency. Look at what happened in history. You see the big six? Otanke Obechebelemte died. J.B. Dankwa died. Before Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown. Then Akufuado became president. So if today Otanka is dead, J.B. Dankwa is dead, Akufuado is president, then the next is Ofuriata. But they know that if they do it, the Ashantis will rise against them. So if Otunfo has come in, when any matter comes, there's an anayin on Kofo Nkasa, then I now say, eh, ye nye nipa ba kwa nyashe, mo manin ko. Ye manin ko ne, ye manin ko china. Ye ma ofori ata ne di president wo broma, en ne, en ko so e china. Na wu aku fwad na wot om le asun, aka o five months. What are you talking about? Let me tell you the death date of Elvis a free anchor. 6 January, am I correct? 6 January is Elvis a free anchor's birthday. Nana? Mark it anywhere. 6 January, I could for this presidency comes to an end. I believe that is your birthday too. Today you represent uh, Elvis de Frankra. This nonsense will stop all. Papa J is not part of it. But you see, they want to do oh, a conta, a conta, a conta. A conta today, you are free. A conta today, John is free. 41 years ago, people were chanting, JJ, do something before you die. You were just 32 years old. The Bible says in the book of Psalm that a man is given 70 years. If you get more, it is a bonus. True? How old is Papa J? Is he not past 70? Thank you. So, Papa J, you have chopped all the pepper and the salt that has been allocated to you. Oh, yes. Every day God gives you life, it is just by his grace. But you must thank God that your family is blessed with long life. Your mother just ten hundred, and it is my prayer that you, Papa J, God will satisfy you with long life. I want you to see some things, so that you see that your labor has not been what in vain. But these people you are working with, Akufuado, 
They want to make your labor to come in vain. But it shall never be in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So this nonsense will stop. Will stop. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In 2007, I'll just read one or two things. He said, the NDC, MPP, sorry, in choosing a leader, must choose somebody who is not always full of tension and fighting and all sorts of things. We must have to be careful about that. Or say the party must stay together. Today, between you and I, is the party together? Do you, have you seen a video of Alan Tremartin being hooted at? Oh, in one of the, he went somewhere. It was Tremaport. Yeah. They were hooting at him. You know what? They, they want to put all the Ashantis aside. Isaac said, where is he? All the Ashantis, where are they? Then the Achims will take over. Tell them it is a lie. So after you, Alan, stay there with them. you see what they'll do to you. Then he also says something. All pro-MPP people will vote, but then I don't think we will make the 50 plus one vote to win a one touch. This is why we need to stay together so that we will be attracted to draw other people to join, to go beyond the absolute majority. What President Kufo was saying that you must choose a candidate who can clock the 50 plus one. Plus one. Hey, 2008, how much did I cook for the clock? 49 point what? He couldn't cross. 2012, 47 points. There was no way he could cross. Then in 2016, you, you plan and murder your own brother, J.B. Dankwa, and you cross the 50 point something, and you say we should clap for you. We won't clap for you. God will judge you. Listen to this. To President Kofo, a potential candidate for the presidential slot is someone with the experience and with all due respect, the wisdom to be able to keep the country united. You want somebody with the experience and with what? Wisdom. Nyansa. To keep the country what? United. To secure the nation. To gain the respect of the forces, the military, the police, the chiefs. Look out for that because we know the history. This is Kufo. Or see, we know the history. Which history was he referring to? Some people have been given power only to lose it just like that. We don't want that to happen. President, Prime Minister Buzia was sick, went to hospital. While he was absent, President Kufuado was in charge. Edward Kufuado. 13th January, Kutua Champo did a coup d'etat. That is the history Kufu is referring to. We know the history. That there are some people, when you give them the power, they cannot hold on to it. And he's just like his father. There's no way he can hold on to this power. God is my witness. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So this is what it's all about. Then let's look at something. The Otunfo, the Asantehini. Listen to what he said. Asantehini Otunfo has said that John Mahama led NDC government was kicked out of power in December 7, 2016 election because Ghanaians were hungry and also angry with the performance of his administration. Is that not the words of Otunfo? Okay. He, is, he therefore advised President Akufuado to ensure, I said to what? Ensure that he works hard to improve the living conditions of Ghanaians, lest he also is voted out of power under the same circumstances that confronted his predecessor. Hey, what is good for the goose? Abaniadibo <laughs> A Juma Kakra no one in our close close winning our down. Media minimum say, Crobiano, banks, etumina issues. But you can save the bank, save the, uh, the industry, and deal with those who cause those things to happen. But what did they do? What Pamobia close to banks? Because you want Uforia Test Bank to be heavy due. 
I tell you, you will pay for it. You will pay for it. Amen. I said, you will pay for it. Amen. He says, Ghanaians voted during the 2016 election based on how hungry and angry they were with Mahama led government. That is why he lost the election. Nana Kufuadu must be told that if he doesn't perform to the expectation of Ghanaians, he will be kicked out of office the same way John Mahama was done. Otunfo is a prophet. When he speaks, his words carry weight. And so, Nana, Sna Hoda Nyankwanda, Asamna, Okai, and the Futuna, the Mayano, Katsa, Wadam for Akufuwa to say, Ye de Beye Jumapa, Ye de Beye Jumapa, Nana, what catch and say, Banya de Bodjo Mahamano, and one Yadi Babono, Yen Faba for Frobia. Sabana into Uncana Nuntum, no engine kings, no coffee in Koda, Yeninia Symbia. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Now, Jerry Rollins also says something during Incurmas um, Centenary. Or say, Ghana has seen political metamorphosis since December 31st, 1981. That means since the 31st Revo uh, December Revolution, Ghana has, you know, seen some changes, okay? Ghana has uh, seen political metamorphosis. And he said, this is a journey started by Nkrumah in the 1950s, but derailed by self-seekers who did not appreciate Nkrumah's vision and demonized every aspect of his leadership. Who are they? It's not Dankwa and his crews. So why should we allow them again to come and destroy what John Mahama and his administration at Tamils, John Rawlings, have done. Even what John Kufo has done, they want to destroy it. In the name of Dankwa. Today, Dankwa did everything. University of Ghana, Dankwa. Kolebu, Dankwa. Uh, Mochre, Dankwa. Yenfa Bibia, Ama, Dankwa. Why? If Dankwa did what was right, history would have recorded it. There would have been no need to change history. We all know that it was Kwame Nkrumah. Who led us into independence? Nobody can change that history. Fact. Nobody. Dankwa didn't do fuck up. Dankwa is a ritual murderist. Fact. They should come and ask me. He murdered his own brother, Achia Mensa, the chief of Abidjan, so that they can blacken the stool of Ufriata, his half brother. This nonsense will not be tolerated. Are they the only Ghanaians? Why should we allow one small family to dictate to us? It will never happen. Let me tell them something. In June 4, people were crying, let the blood flow. It was only military people whose blood flowed. Correct? Today, as I hear, let the blood flow, it is the blood of the Achim mafias that will flow. There are two ways that I see. If we allow Akufuado and his stupid Jimensa, that stupid girl, that idiot of a girl, look, I'm telling Jimensa today, me, my grandmother, eh, she has what every woman has. My mother, she has the same thing. All my sisters have the same thing. And everybody is born of a woman. If the Mensa thinks she was not born of a woman, but came from some other angle, she should go ahead and do the new register. Let me watch her. She would die 12 midday, midday. She would die just like that. Nonsense. Idiot. You are a foolish girl, the Mensa. You are an idiot. I have no sweat here. I'm telling you today. Try it and you see. What kind of nonsense is that? You think you are better than us Ghanaians? You are better than the Christian Council who have advised you? Better than the House of Chiefs? Nonsense. Stupid Akufuadu girl. What about damn papa? Jimine yo. Munya musra musma kosku muni nansa. Common sense kwa muni bi. Because she are four. Finish that Ghana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two more. Moa. Jimmy four. Let me tell you something. Odifo Kwabne tell you. He said nine prominent MPP people will die before MPP wins power. Sometimes the prophecy doesn't come from me. But when the prophecy is authentic, God will tell me, monitor that prophecy. So I started monitoring. Now, I remember in 2015, before Parliament broke, the Lord told me, tell MPP to organize prayers at the Western region. I didn't know who to tell. Because I, I didn't want to go. Me, I don't like pride. 
Then the Lord said, well, can the Japan say it's their financier? So, go and tell him. So I went to parliament, filled the visitor's form. And then he came, he called me. In fact, I'll be very honest, he gave me respect. After that, what you could you swear? No, in America. But when he called me, suddenly about 40, 45 people popped up from nowhere. Honorable my rent, honorable my school fees, honorable my medicine. I said, hey, is that what is going on? So we couldn't even dialogue. So I just summarized what I had to tell him. And then he asked me to call him the next day, 5 uh, a.m. I didn't know he woke up so early. And when I called, he was up. He had had his bath and he was <laughs> on his way to work. You know what he told me? Was it awful? Me and Crawford were MP before. No, me Jimmy. Oh, he told me. He said, Wait, I'm a Jimmy. Jaw, I'm a Jimmy. 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 i Oh, for yet our MPP, Safma for MPP, Jimmy for MPP, and I can the person in country. What Jimmy Jimmy? We Jimmy for? When Jimmy and Kamu need them, we. We say we are waiting for you. Hey, Mufasa Akwani, the fire will fall. Do you know what I saw? I saw at him the palace. I saw it on fire, and people were saying, "Let the blood flow." And I said, "Whose blood?" They said, "The Atim Mafia." Gabi Oche Dakon, Asante Bedi Etuo. Name them, Safo Mafo. Ah, they'll run you all up. Do you know, thanks be to God, because of Corona, all the borders are closed. Nobody's going anywhere. Uh -huh. We are all here. Until you feel like, do what is right and live peacefully. Or, do what will cause the fire to burn and the fire will burn you. Nobody's going anywhere. So that, Pat Noafatogo, now call. No, I can free play. Now I go to Dubai. No, we are all here. We are all here. Nobody's going anywhere. Akufado, don't open the borders. Too. Don't open the borders now. We will deal with you before the borders are open. You will do the right thing. Now, so, the Lord, when Kennedy didn't mind me, there's a man called Wilson. He owns Sky FM, Takradi. The Lord directed me there. I went, I spoke to him. I see if he would do it. He wouldn't do it. Because he has a premises. We could have done it at his forecourt. He has chairs. He has instruments. I went there twice. He didn't mind me. So the Friday that I proposed that we should do it, nobody minded me. So I came back to Accra. Then the Monday, somebody say Monday. <laughs> it was the 8th of February, 2016. This is after I had launched my book, The Mystery of the Jones. Prophesying that J.B. Dankwa must die before Akufuado can become president. John Buedu went to the Western region to have a meeting with the executives. The Western region chairman was sick in hospital in London, so the deputy was standing in for him. I have his name somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I, I, the name is, I, I'll, I'll get the name. Should be here. He's called. Um, yeah. Acting chairman. His name was Ben Kau. Ben Kau. So that morning, he went for a walk. And then he collapsed, or he nearly collapsed. So he took a taxi, brought it home. He didn't have money on him, so the wife said she brought some money to pay. So quickly they put him in a car to rush him to hospital. Before they got to the hospital, he was what? Dead. Master, when God says, me, I should come and tell you to organize prayer, and you say you won't organize the prayer, me, I don't say anything, no. But you face the consequences. You see, Elijah will say, it will not rain except by my word. Because he speaks the word of God. And it didn't rain until 1 Kings 18. The Bible says the word of God came to Elijah. Go and show yourself to Ahab, and I'll send rain. So if God's word comes to you and you say you won't respect the word of God, the word what will deal with you. So that Monday morning, Kwao, uh, was Ben Kwao, 
collapsed and died. So when God was telling them, organize prayer at the Western region, first consequences, okay. Then the following day, on the 9th of February, J.B. Danko was stabbed to death. The count is going on. Oh. We want nine people. They must all die before MPP can become, can come into power. Then in March, Jake Otanko Bechablemte, Payain, dead. Then do you remember this guy, uh, Riafi Vipra? Yes. Payain, dead. Then uh, Dubois, uh, du his wife, Payain, dead. And the list went on and on. The last person to die was Kwabna Buedu, John Maha, uh, Baumier's young boy. We all went to Tamale. We are coming. They say, you wait and do one or two things before you come. By the time they go to the junction, they say the man is dead. Hey, Baumia. Hmm. You, Baumia, when you collapsed, I came here so that the children, the orphans will pray for you, Baumia, so that you won't die. Yo. <laughs> so, the list continues. Do you know something? When a farmer wants to sow yams, let's take yams for example. Does he sow the small, small, uh, does he plant the small, small yams? He reserves the big ones because he wants a bumpy harvest. So if they say nine MPP prominent gurus will die, that means they are sowing a certain seed for a certain harvest. So bear that in mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Before we round up, I just want us to look at the last words of J.B. Dankwa. And then we'll look at the last words of Emisa Atta. And you see that these are the words of men who are about what? To die. And we know in history that the last words of any dying man it's very, very important. The last verse of J.B. Dankwa. You know, there was um, February 4th, J.B. Dankwa's uh, 51st anniversary. They launched this book, What Every um, Child Must Know About JB, Dr. J.B. Dankwa. And the late MP prophesied in the presence of MPP sympathizers that 10 months from now, the party will be jubilating. Akufuado will be moving into the Flagstaff House, inshallah. This is, these are the last words of J.B. Dankwa, openly, publicly. Five days later, he was what? Murdered. Little did he know that through his own blood, the prophecy he gave was going to come to pass. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at the last words of Emisata. You know, Emisata's death, I prophesied it. I went to Kusibuchi, 29th of May. I said, hey, all the fanties who have become vice presidents in the NDC, they are dying. You, Kusibuchi, stay out because Emisata is next. Exactly one month later, 29th of June, Panyai, who died? Emisata. Former Vice President Kwesi Misata has stated that he was dragged into politics when he was still practicing as an economist. The former governor of the Bank of Ghana added that he will make a return to politics at the right time, despite a humiliating defeat in the 2016 elections. I started as an economist. I was dragged into politics. I don't know if I am there or I'm going home. But to borrow the words of President Rollins, it is not over, it is not over, Mr. Emisata said, when he chaired a lecture ahead of the June 4th Revolution Remembrance. The former Vice President also backed calls for probity and accountability that are espoused by the former President and founder of the National Democratic Congress, Jerry John Rollins. He urged members of the opposition NDC to remain united. Listen to the last words of Emisata. Remain united and focused as the party reorganizes to return to power in 2020. I said to return where? To power. To redo what? To power. To return where? To the president. To return to power. <laughs> ah, J.B. Dankwa said in six months, Akufuadu will be coming to power. Yes. And it happened. Mm -hmm. Emisata says you are returning to power in 2020. And it is happening. It is hap not that it will happen. It is happening. Amen. 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 It is happening right now, right now. Amen. 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 Now, since they choose June 16 to launch their operations, okay? I told you about June 16, 2014, when they launched um, that service, a remembrance of the generals. 
But really, it was an attack on the NDC, but they didn't see it. And it manifested when Elvis uh, Free Ankara was heading the team to bring the cup from Brazil. You know, it would have been such an honor for the NDC. But they don't want NDC to enjoy that honor. So they went about to destroy it. So, by the grace of God, on the 16th of June, we will also organize a service. We will launch the Exodus of 2020. And the Exodus of 2020 says, Dankwa, let my people go. Dankwa, let my people go. Dankwa, let my people go. If Dankwa says he will not let God's people go, oh, you are. Let's all go and read what happened to Pharaoh, and we will all know what will happen to the president. These stickers will come out on the 16th of June. I will distribute them across all the 16 regions, and they will go around. You see them on cars, in offices, in the marketplaces, wherever. People will display them. And this is like the blood that was used at the Exodus. When God said, when I see the blood, no evil will pass over that house. When the angels are going around to do the execution, if they see the sticker on your house, in your office, that means you are exempted from judgment. Amen. If you don't have this sticker, then you support the MPP. May judgment fall on you. I say, may judgment fall on you. If you don't have this sticker in your house, in your office, on your car, then you support this murderers who kill people for power. Therefore, may judgment fall on you. But if you believe in the mercies of God, if you believe that Abba Father is a merciful God, display the sticker in your home, every household, one sticker, your office, your car, wherever. Now, I'm going to give it to the NDC women organizers because they are going to be in charge of prayers in the various constituencies. So I'm going to tell them when they come, you give them a token from two cities to five cities according to your pocket. If you don't have anything, two cities. Give it to the women. Tell them to use it to what? Organize prayers. Because I want the women to organize prayers and we don't have money. You know Akufuado has sat on all the money and he tells us, yet he can't come there. What is he can't come there? So we appeal to everybody. If you want to be part of it, when the women come, just give them a token. Two cities, three cities, four cities, even up to five cities. And let them use it to organize the prayers. They will need to rent places, perhaps even transport people there, okay, so that they can pray on behalf of Ghana. So 16th June, we are going to organize it. Um, my brother, I will put you in charge of that organization. Um, the president says not more than 100 people can meet. So I'm reserving 16 regions, eh? The women's are uh, the women's organizer and the deputy. So reserve uh, 32 seats for the women. Okay, and then the rest uh, give invitations out. No more than 100 people. We want to show that we are law-abiding people. Okay, so that is what we are going to do by the grace of God. Amen. 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 Okay, now. Before I forget, we are not going to allow the NDC to ever come to power. Over our dead body, so shall it be. Amen. I say, so shall it be. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. The real owners of Ghana are now in charge. Whatever the NDC has stopped in the past, they should keep it. We are sounding a warning to them. They will not see power again. The only way NDC can see power again will be over their dead body. So, Osla Usu, I'm taking your challenge up. You said, in your own words, we are not going to allow the NDC ever to come to power over our dead bodies. So, that means if NDC will come to power, it must be over your dead bodies. So, we will come to power working on your dead bodies. Mark it on the wall. Amen. Now, NDC can never win the majority leader or say chairman. You see, it is an agenda. And you see, it's coming from their mouth one by one. You all say, you are no you, chairman. We will meet again in Tafo. Ah, we are all Ashantis. 
We will meet again in Tafo. You, this coming from your mouth. I, I, I expected better. Shame on you. Then Bosman Asari. NDC is a threat to Ghana's democracy. Bosman Asari. And Mensa. Who is a threat to Ghana's democracy? Ha! NDC, who is rather fostering democracy? Rather I threat? Hey, something is happening. Then Ghana's High Commission to South Africa, George A. C. Boateng, stated that his topmost priority on his mission to South Africa was the problems of the members of the governing New Patriotic Party before any other Ghanaian. This is MPP, Akufuadu's appointee. He says, as for him, if problems come, he will look out for the MPP. Serve them before any other Ghanaian. He didn't end there. He therefore called on all government appointees to be very careful and work for the party members first in terms of job opportunities. When NDC came, they say father for all. Everybody was getting jobs. They were getting businesses. Even Brian Champo, he got a very juicy job worth billions of cities when he was in opposition. Today, when he came to power, you, see, you saw what he did to you at Ayawaso. And he says, this is a taste of what is coming 2020. As my God lives. They should bring it on. I tell you, don't run away from Ghana. Hey! I saw it all. I saw it. I said they should bring it on. They will run away from Ghana. Brian Champon, I'm warning you and your boys. Try it. That your hotel, it will be on fire. Your properties. And you say you have children. Some of you say you have 22 children. You are building houses for them. You will see where the houses will end. And you will see what will happen to your 22 children. You are making other people orphans. But you, you, are, you are accumulating wealth for your children. You think God is asleep? Nyame, onayo. Onaye. Onaye. Amen. So, this is what we want to share uh, for June 4th. I heard a voice in heaven say, this Akufuado presidency is useless. Useless. The president is useless. The vice president is useless. The finance minister is useless. The senior minister is useless. All their ministers appointed, they are all useless. It is a useless government. This is what I heard heaven say. So let there be a change of government. Let the former regime be installed. Let me close with this. I don't know if you know the story of the Amalekites. In um, Exodus 17, the Amalekites attacked Israel when they were coming from the promised land. They were thirsty. And that's when Moses lifted his hand and Joshua was fighting. And Moses' hands grew uh, tired, so they had to hold him. Now, after the victory, the Lord vowed that in every generation, he would destroy the Amalekites. Okay. Rolling over, there was a king called Saul. You know how Saul became king? When he was looking for his father's donkeys, blah, blah, blah. So, the prophet told him, wait for me, I will come and offer burnt uh, offering for you. This can be found in 1 Samuel 15, 1 to 3, and then 1 Samuel 15, 7 to 23. Samuel, uh, Saul waited, and when Samuel was not coming, he decided to offer the burnt offering himself. So when you read 1 Samuel 13, 13, the prophet said, you have done very foolishly. You are, it is not your place to offer the burnt offering. So why go and do it? Because he saw the people going away from him and he was afraid. Remember, what was he doing? He offered a burnt offering. Then he had another assignment in 1 Samuel uh, 15, yes, yeah, 7 to 23. The Lord asked him to go and destroy the Amalekites. All their goods, everything. They shouldn't take anything. You know what Saul did? He killed the Amalekites but left the king. Yeah. So, like I said, you know what Saul did? He left all the fat cows. And when Samuel came, have you done what the Lord said? He said, oh, I've done everything. That's what Samuel said, ah, but what am I hearing? He said, oh, we reserve this to offer it as a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the prophet said, you are a stupid fool that the Lord loves burnt offerings more than obedience. To obey is better than what? To sacrifice. You see, the Lord has told me, 
are in my own ears that he has not asked Akufuadu to build him a cathedral. That is not the mandate of the president. If we Christians want to build a cathedral, we will come together, give offering. If we want help from the government, we will approach government. Akufuadu, God says he has not asked you to build any cathedral. You are behaving like so. You are being foolish. Your core mandate is to get our jobs, get us better housing, better health care, better education, not the mess you are creating. The law says, as you tell you, he has not asked you to build any cathedral. So all of you, archbishops and bishops and what have you, towing the line, supporting the cathedral. Master, God hasn't asked him to do anything. His core mandate as a president is not to build cathedrals, but to create jobs to make this country a better country for all of us. God has not asked you. So in London, when the Financial Times editor asked him, you know what his response? He said, the cathedral is a priority among priorities. Akufad, excuse me. Choose one. I'll read a few excerpts from my book, and then we'll end. There is a ritualist, a spiritual ritualist. And according to an interview he had, before he could accomplish what MPP had asked him to do, he needed a, rep a representative from Akufuadu's family to represent him. According to the spiritualist, they contacted the Ochehine. And the Ochehi gave them one Yabua. And they didn't want Yabua. But when they brought J.B. Dankwa, they wanted him. Now, according to this spiritualist, 18 MPP big men from Ashanti region came to consult him. They include Boris B. of Boris B. Farms. Kumasi, everybody knows Boris B. Boris B., all the profit you are, profit you are making is on J.B. Dankwa and blood. And you are making them to say for your children, watch out. Or say, Kabna is he entry? Is he a mayor or something? He's a mayor. That mayor you are chopping is JB Dankwa's blood. Then, and you see Boateng, the ambassador. He promised to pay 500000 to the spiritualists to do his work. And so when they didn't pay the money, the spiritualists came up and threatened them that if they don't pay the money, he would tell them exactly what they did. Then he said the first approach, Dr. Samson Kweku Buafo. SK Buafo, I know, is a pastor. pastor. So how can a pastor be involved in a ritual murder? Hmm. SK Buafo, you better answer. You two, you have children. So in the interview, the spiritual is threatening to expose them. Within a week, if he does not receive 500,000 or 50 billion old currency. But we didn't hear anything again. So, to conclude, that means they paid the money and the spiritualist has kept quiet. So, you see, MPP, you are sinking deep when it comes to the murder of J.B. Dankwa. You are all involved and all of you who have taken appointees, appointments is on J.B. Dankwa and his blood is crying out for vengeance. So, watch out. Dr. Amwakutu for your name was mentioned. Wound to me, your name was mentioned. You think you are smarter than God? God is smarter than you. I want the people of Ghana to read Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9. Every Ghanaian should read it if you want to know what is going to happen. Join this Exodus of 2020. Just go and read Ezekiel 20. Should I read it? Then we close with it, okay? Let me just read. Let me stand up and read. To the glory of God. Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel chapter 9. Then I heard him call out in a loud voice, Bring near those who are appointed to execute judgment on the city. Each with a weapon in his hand. And I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. With them was a man clothed in linen 
who had a writing kit at his side. They came in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of the Lord of Israel went up from above the cherubim where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen who had the writing kit at his side and said to him, go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. As I listened, he said to the others, follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter the old men, the young men and the women, the mothers and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the old men who were in front of the temple. Then he said to them, defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go. So they went out and began killing throughout the city. While they were killing and I was left alone, I fell face down crying out, Allah, sovereign Lord, are you going to destroy the entire remnant of Israel in this outpouring of your wrath? On Jerusalem he answered me the sin of the people of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great the land is full of bloodshed and the city is full of injustice they say the Lord has forsaken the land the Lord does not see so I will not look on them with pity or spare them but I will bring down on their own heads what they have done then the man in the linen with a writing kit at his side brought back word saying, I have done as you commanded. Amen. 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 The angels of the Lord are going out. Mm. And I can hear, let the blood flow. Mm. Let the blood flow. Mm. The blood of every Achim mafia will fall to the ground. Amen. If they choose to go on that road, but there's another road. It's a peaceful road. All you do is do the limited registration. Hey, me, in the vision, I saw myself voting with this card. Amen. I was voting for 2020, Amen. and it is this card. This is the card I used, and this card was accepted. This is the card we will use. Amen. No other card will be used. Amen. Go and do limited registration take out those who are dead and present the register 7 december we are voting Amen. 6 january akufado your term has ended Amen. take it or leave it my brother please come you share the same birthday with elvis Efria Ankara. take this message to him tell him god has seen what they have done to him it is not his fault it is the NPP that orchestrated it. But God is restoring him. Amen. God is restoring him. Amen. Therefore, he is going to lead Amen. NDC into victory. Amen. 6th January is his birthday. Yes. It is your birthday. The government of Akufuado comes to an end. Amen. That is how he's going to celebrate his birthday. Yes. When you are going to him, don't go empty handed. Yes, Take with you a bottle of communion wine and a bottle of water and present it to him. I'll tell you what he must do with it. Okay. On the 16th, if it's possible, invite him to the service. Okay. Now, as I end my message today, mm, 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 16th, we are going to launch the stickers. Like I said, if you are MPP, don't bother. But the angels will go around. This is the mark. I read Ezekiel chapter 9. He said, Somebody was going around marking people. Eh? And when the angel was going around, it says, those who have the mark, spare them. But those who don't have the mark, execute them. If you don't have this in front of your door, in your office, in your car, you are fighting God. Amen. And God will fight you. Amen. I say, and God will fight you. Amen. And God will fight you. Amen. Tell every Frianka to prepare you to take over when he has finished. Hmm? Tell him this is what Elohim is saying. He must prepare you 
you are going to lead the NDC into its future victories. Amen. So tell Abi Sefianka that Elohim said he must prepare you. Amen. Take with you a bottle of communion wine and a bottle of water. It represents the blood and the water that came from his pierced side. Amen. Bible says we shall lift up our eyes to the one whom we pierce. Amen. So we look to Jesus, the author and the finisher Amen. of our salvation. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Amen. I'll see you on the 16th. Amen. People of Ghana, I want to thank you for your time. I know I've taken much of your time, but there was the need to explain everything so that you know what we are doing. I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing this for NDC. I'm not doing it for anybody. I'm doing it for Ghana. Amen. For Mother Ghana. Amen. Leslie, Mensa Tamaklo and Don Dramani Mahama are the ones leading the NDC team. If you see Amen. somebody else standing by Don Dramani Mahama, then NDC, you've lost the election. Amen. Because that means you are giving Akufuado's vision oxygen. 18th April represents the day oxygen was taken out of their vision. Leslie Mensa Tamaklo is born, the economic Mixaya, he's born 18th April. Yes. Once he stands by the side of JM, every oxygen to the NPP is cut off. If you don't see Leslie Mensa Tamaklo there, tell NBC, I, I said they have lost the elections already. Amen. May God be with you. I love you all. Until I meet you again on the 16th of June, take care of yourselves. Amen. Amen. Yo, ado fosen na mede kan e ka no jumede nyina abawiye e wo edem ho. E ye wo osofo apostol kobra eje e wo hanom ye pese ye bisa ne nsem ba komie no no ntumi emma ye nchichemu iye se muhwe se manhye noxmax na mi pese uti mi kasa ne ye eno ntia nti e facha mi. E osofo mi ma okwaba e ba otun forty viso. Mejoso, mejoso. Eh ye 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 na. Eh osofo em Jumede no akoso wo inside ho mi pese mi mi bisa o motive ana se mi hu se wa kan sem bebre so nyame na esuma wo se be kasa nsema ya wo ka wo inside ho nyame nsuma mi amintu mi meka because me no um me pami wa sem i just mind my own business but nyame ka se kone koka i don't care who you are o sem ba beka Okay. Uh, Waso Babeka. O uh, Ubi Beka says Senyami yi yi chrebi chewa. A dena nipana wa ya deni chew fani huno un konin chen if you say u can trust in him sesana chese ube koni pan any mako kachin. A dena wan yeni sana. De bi aw pese u kanu obe jumuma ubi tibi. Medase. O kai Bible principles are also ununya wa sema. Kokachen, oneno. O kanu wentia, o kwa fa witness kahu. Wentia treatin se na kachu bianu ubi anti. Oma so ordain atra baby any omu ka asem ordain. Into osem e kama ubiya who di ekoso e o kukuem. That's the only way to solve the problem. Cause at the end of the day, no yen ebi huna money. So into kwesi kru masia omu ebi nka omu ba yen minu mi enu yere ni ema eni ebi huna money. And we will not allow that to happen. Okay. Into obi be bisa se abain bi anaso peni bi tawe chintina wanu din 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 e yes anya mawe. Me peni mu bi esro me obi entu min tawe chi because me be tawe chi a uko di boni ameka uye di ensem fata ameka inti o tawe chi a ube nuhu inti me me tawe chi me mi amsi karam di e bi bi a mi misu obi a she me wa asori ma adofua they believe in my vision ma tawe mi books book na mi e ma tawe bi inti se es kani bi na mi di e ring mi di e juma no. Okay. And now, no dear, you be here or high, will be comment our choice and me person me be so. Well, see, dear, you know what if they are all born in the Tamaku Tamaku say, Nasa Yanko Fan, vice president, a dinner or so for Obey. Yanko Fan, vice president, I mean, yes, Yanko Fan, vice president, and this year, Lucy, case close. And this is a man called Fan and I, this year, and no say. Ah, some when you are, some empty, you don't do your kind of career. Yeah, okay, I said, uh, me kai said 2009 January, a radis man semi kokan che present ko for some kan che na nado say 22 of one ready we join dada. I go for the way me ya. last minute or here in the campaign na ewie kuma se, owie bibia ne kan open here den, ebugu form. That was the sign. So we din ku go. Okay. It's in a way no manya ka no. Wa wa pe, you know, ti wa am person so no. Well, it's up to you. Inside, how many who say what did the impenetrable attempt be brave? Obi be casting our soft on our yes. I didn't know. Obi attempt. Me repeat it again. Japan can't. I say MPP for Jimmy. 
and MPP for Saku for the MPP, Baumio MPP, Safama for MPP, no slow so MPP. In the Canada Ponsi, my Jimmy, Mede Mekari, I'm just repeating what Canada Pons said, Osimo Jimmy. Case close. All right, Osofo, and then you better say, Miss Medamasi, Namin Shagana for Omagana, Yakese, Nayan Koyanim, and Kunim Dia. NDC, a modia, Mon Concofa, we used to demo. Amen. Amen. Was seen Kunim D, a NDC for the Amon Concofa, dear me, can you say, a Sebio, the Obechian in our video nomono, Sheni, Nabibia, I was a Ushe Kamasem, Nako Kamasem, Usu and Dio Bichi, Uncle Dido Biatem, Eman Concofa, Haubia, and Bero. Aha, I owe two for TV, subscribe to your two for TV, Nafi, na follow ye our Facebook. Munia Bema Jemni, Macramunina. Otunfo TV, yene ya mamre, eni ye mpuntu, Otunfo TV, opinpon, eni ye ye.